harmed, all this being in violation of Ohio Revised Code, Section 2905.01A4, which is kidnapping of felony in the first degree. Count 2 alleges that on or about the period between August 16, 2016 and September 13, 2016 in Ashland County, Ohio, you, Sean M. Gray, purposely caused the death of another to wit Mary Doe in violation of Ohio Revised Code, Section 2903.02A, which is the offense of murder. Count 3 alleges that on or about the period between September 8, 2016 and September 13, 2016 in Ashland County, Ohio, you, Sean M. Gray, purposely caused the death of another to wit Stacy J. Hicks, also known as Stacy J. Stanley, in violation of Ohio Revised Code, Section 2903.02A, which is the offense of murder. This complaint is signed by uh, Detective Kim Major, the Ashland Police Department. Do you understand the nature of the three offenses charged in the complaint, Mr. Gray? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Gray, you have various rights in this matter. You have a right to remain silent. If you give up that right, anything you say can and will be used against you in future court proceedings. You have a right to be represented by an attorney. If you can't afford to hire an attorney, the court will appoint an attorney to represent you. If the court appoints an attorney to represent you, there's a $25 indigent attorney application fee that's payable to the clerk of courts within seven days following the appointment of counsel. However, if that $25 application fee is not paid within that seven days, it's otherwise taxed or assessed as part of the court cost. You also have a right to a preliminary hearing since you are before the court on a complaint that a preliminary hearing is a probable cause hearing to determine whether there's probable cause to find your case over to the Ashton County Grand Jury for further consideration for indictment. That preliminary hearing has to be held within 10 days of your arrest if you do not postpone or within 15 days of your arrest if you do postpone unless that preliminary hearing is otherwise waived or an indictment is issued prior to the expiration of that time period. And finally, Mr. Gray, you have a right to have these charges tried to a jury of 12 persons and to require that the state of Ohio prove you guilty of each element of each one of these offenses beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of each and every one of the 12 jurors and panel for trial. Do you understand those rights as I've explained them to you, Mr. Gray? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Gray, do you have the means to hire your own attorney or will you be requesting court-appointed counsel? Court appointed counsel. Okay. Is there another mailing address for you other than the Ashland County Jail? No. All right. Are you currently currently receiving any type of public assistance in the form of Ohio Works First or TAM upon supplemental security income, Social Security disability, Medicaid, poverty-related veterans benefits, or food stamps? No. Are you employed? Not no more. I was working at Save a lot. Do they owe you any uh, accrued wages? No. Do you have any cash you know, deposited in a financial institution like a checking account, credit union account, or any loose cash? No. Okay, I'm going to find that you are indigent, that you qualify for court-appointed counsel. I'm going to appoint attorney Rolf Whitney to represent you. Mr. Whitney will be advised of the uh, appointment and your next hearing date and time, which I'm going to schedule for Monday morning at 7.45, because he's already set to be here this Monday at 8. Uh, is there anything you'd like me to consider when setting bond? Mr. Gray, is there anything you'd like me to consider when determining bond in this case? No, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Tunnell? Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, pursuant to Rule 46C of the Ohio Rules of uh, Criminal Procedure, the court should be advised of the following. Uh, this defendant purposely murdered two victims as charged in the complaint. An additional victim uh, is uh, in Richland County, where the defendant led authorities to her body. The defendant kidnapped and sexually assaulted another victim as charged in count one of the complaint. That defendant was held by the defendant for a period of days between this past Sunday and Tuesday morning. The state believes the weight of the evidence against this defendant is strong. The state further believes, subject to conflict,
information. The defendant's prior criminal history consists of the following. 1994, misdemeanor assault out of the Marion Municipal Court. 1996, disorderly conduct out of the Marion Municipal Court. 1997, burglary, felony of the second degree out of Marion County Court of Common Pleas. 1999, misdemeanor assault and unlawful restraint from the Marion Municipal Court. 1999, aggravated menacing from the Marion Municipal Court. Also in 1999, criminal trespass, violating a protection order, and telephone harassment, all out of the Marion Municipal Court. Parole violation was filed in the Marion County Court of Common Pleas in 1999. In 2000, the defendant was convicted of felony abduction in the Marion County Court of Common Pleas. 2003, misdemeanor domestic violence in the Marion Municipal Court. In 2007, falsification, identity theft, and obstructing out of the Bucyrus Municipal Court. 2009, possession of marijuana in the Bucyrus Municipal Court. 2010, misdemeanor domestic violence in the Bucyrus Municipal Court. In 2013, misdemeanor drug abuse, possession of drug paraphernalia, and misdemeanor receiving stolen property out of Mansfield Municipal Court. In June of 2016, the Mansfield Municipal Court issued a warrant for this defendant for obstructing official business after this defendant fled on foot from the sheriff's deputy. That warrant appears to be active. In 2016, there's also an open case for contempt of court out of the Crawford County Juvenile Court. This court should also be advised that the defendant is transient, he has no fixed residence, and the house that he was found in in the city of Ashland, he had broken into and was essentially squatting in. Based upon the foregoing, the state would recommend a million dollar bond for this defendant in cash, no contact direct or indirectly with Jane Doe as listed in count one, participation in the court's electronic monitoring program, and additionally require him to sign a personal recognizance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tonell. Mr. Green, it's going to be the order of the court with regard to bond to sign a personal recognizance bond, that's a signature bond, but if you violate the conditions of that bond by failing to appear for any future court hearing, your failure to appear would constitute a separate fourth degree felony offense that would be added to the other charges. In addition to that PR bond, I'm going to order that you post a surety bond in the amount of one million dollars. A surety bond can be deposited with a deposit of one million dollars cash. It's a type of bond you can pay the premium to a bail bondsman to post on your behalf in the form of a surety, or an equity interest in real estate can be pledged as a surety for that bond. The terms and conditions of bond will include that you not leave the state of Ohio during the pendency of this case, that you appear for all future hearings in the case. If you post bond, you need to provide the court with current address and contact information and immediately report to the court any change in that information. So you have to keep the court informed of your current address and telephone number at all times. And you have to obey all laws and all orders of the court, including the terms and conditions of probation. You're not to have any contact either directly or indirectly with Jane Doe, who's identified in count one of the complaint filed in this matter. That means no social networking, any type of electronic communication, any kind of direct contact, any kind of indirect contact, whether that be by electronic means, direct mail, telephone, or even through a third party agent. Finally, if you should post bond, I'm going to order that you be subject to passive GPS monitoring and that you be subject as well to a curfew and be in an approved residence between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Any questions about the terms and conditions of bond, Mr. Gray? No, sounds fair. Okay, well, as I noted, we're going to set this matter for a further appearance on the complaint for Monday morning at 7.45 a.m. I'm going to have my staff contact Attorney Whitney, because although he's scheduled to appear in open court at 8 o'clock for a competency hearing, I want to find out if he feels comfortable doing this in open court or whether he wants to do it by video, even if he 
weeks here at the courthouse. Uh, if you haven't bought it out, we can set up another video hearing like this uh, if necessary for any concerns over security issues. So, uh, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, Monday morning, they'll be here, set you up for video again. And Mr. Whitney will participate here from the courthouse or they'll bring you over uh, to the courthouse for that appearance. Either way, we'll give you an opportunity to speak with Mr. Whitney, even if we have to, because other people are participating, and I'm assuming it's going to have the same public interest Monday. We may need to set up a second video link if necessary, so you have an opportunity to speak with Mr. Whitney, if it is by video, and to do so confidentially that others can't get into. Anything further today, Mr. Tanel? No, sir, thank you. All right, and that will conclude this hearing. Courts of recess are excused, Mr. Gray. Thank you. Thank you.